What's up, y'all? It's Fuego. I've been really doubling down on my research, and honestly, the one thing that's been the bane of my existence has been collecting data. I spent the past few weeks doing chemical calibration over and over and over again, and honestly, it's been eating my life away. But obviously, data is a necessary evil, and today, that's what we're gonna talk about. When we talk about artificial intelligence and machine learning, it's literally impossible to ignore the concept of data. Supervised machine learning requires input data as well as input labels, and even unsupervised machine learning still requires input data. Even if you're not curating data sets, you still need some sort of input data to run through your algorithm. In the age of big data, AI has become extremely arrogant. The fact that sci-fi portrays our ability to create and train a brain in orders of magnitude less time than it takes to raise a child is honestly hilarious to me. But science fiction aside, modern AI algorithms are really just high-end function approximators. They learn to predict something using a set of input data. And even as AI algorithms get better and better, the one thing that humans continue to have on AI is the fact that we can generalize. A model is really only as good as its performance in unseen scenarios. This doesn't mean that the unseen context has to be completely unrelated, but sometimes the inability to generalize renders many artificial intelligence algorithms to just really good conference papers. But I'm still gonna argue that data is the number one most important thing to curate, analyze, and understand when building production quality machine learning algorithms. There are some fundamentals that explain some of the biggest mistakes that researchers can make when collecting data and analyzing algorithms. If we train and evaluate our models on small data sets, then we can't really say anything real about generalization. But we also have to understand that model size, data set size, and dataset diversity have differing impacts on our model performance in general situations. So today I'm gonna to talk about a few core issues regarding data related to how I develop artificial intelligence algorithms that kind of prevent me from driving myself mad, wasting a lot of time, and making mistakes that other people have made before. Let's just get into it. Before we get too deep, let's briefly discuss how artificial intelligence algorithm development works. First, we're gonna figure out what our task is. Then we're gonna figure out what our input data is and if we need to annotate that data or collect another data set. And we also need to figure out what our model is going to be. Then we optimize our model, and during optimization, we typically split our data into three categories, training data, test data, and validation data. Train data is the largest portion of the data set that's used to actually optimize your model directly. Now, the test data is used to evaluate your model to figure out how to do in a general situation that it didn't actually see. If you have a validation data set, the validation data set is supposed to be used for hyperparameter tuning, but some people don't really use validation data sets. For many machine learning algorithms that you develop, you'll typically follow these steps. Let's talk about model size, data set size, and data set diversity. I tend to focus on computer vision, so we can use facial recognition data sets as an example. Model size is closely related to dataset size. If you watch my video on encoder-decoder models, you'll know that many models can actually be transferred from one task to another using the concept of transfer learning. These models can often be pre-trained, allowing us to use less of our own data during our own model optimization to achieve a good result. However, if we don't have a pre-trained model, we'll definitely need to have a minimum number of training examples in our dataset to achieve good performance, even on test datasets that are extremely similar to our training dataset. This can be hundreds of thousands of examples, or even in the millions, especially for relatively relatively homogenous data sets like facial recognition. Let's talk about data diversity. We often find that if a data set is extremely unbalanced, it's often difficult to achieve high performance in general cases. And honestly, in the United States and many other countries, the population isn't really balanced. So if we need millions of examples, you can see how this could become a problem. This is why data sets are so expensive. To find a data set that accurately matches your target environment and also is diverse and highly represents the people who are using your application, that's not always the easiest thing to find. One time I was doing an internship at a tech company and I changed my hair and makeup like every single day, kind of how I change my hair and makeup a lot now. But a nearby group would ask me every single day to use my face in their data set. And at first I thought it was kind of weird, but then I just realized that yeah, I change my hair every single day and it would give them really great examples for their data set. But this gets us into something that's often difficult to evaluate, data set bias. We all have blind spots and I'm sure we all know that. But instead of getting too deep into those specific bias issues, I wanna talk about this paper from 2011 by Antonio Taraba and Alexi Efros. And I think the first part of the abstract really sums up the integral issue with data set bias. Data sets are an integral part of contemporary object recognition research. They have been the chief reason for the considerable progress in the field, not just as source of large amounts of training data, but also as means of measuring and comparing performance of competing algorithms. At the same time, datasets have often been blamed for narrowing the focus of object recognition research, reducing it to a single benchmark performance number. Indeed, some datasets that started out as data capture efforts aimed at representing the visual world have become closed worlds unto themselves. With the focus on beating the latest benchmark numbers on the latest dataset, have we perhaps lost sight of the original purpose? The fact of the matter is that models are evaluated on the data sets that the researchers are utilizing. It becomes really easy to convince yourself that you know the conditions 
of your target world, but far too many times, the edge cases that seem like they're uncommon cases during training become much more common in the general world and lead to a much greater negative response to the performance of your model. But then again, it's either financially infeasible or fiscally irresponsible in the short term to really avoid that. But I guess the question is, is that really an excuse? But rather than throwing our hands up at the problem and considering it hopeless, we can look at our software objectively and figure out how to do right by the people who use our software. If you're battling dataset size and diversity issues, here are a few ways you can improve your model's ability to generalize and produce good results for everyone who uses it. Data augmentation is really the first step I take when aiming for generalization. This is where at each step in training, I make a random, subtle change to my input data such that the model doesn't see the same data repeatedly. This can be a color or contrast shift, adding noise, or random transitional shifts in crops. Often we'll see that data augmentation alone can't combat a small data set size, so if you can, go out and get more data. For common tasks, there are usually data sets out there for free if you're a student and for pay if you're a company, but recently there's been a ton of work on using synthetic data and virtual reality to solve the data problem, so that's really promising. But for a custom task, nothing is going to beat going outside and getting that data. I know that it can often be annoying, but you definitely have to go out and make that effort. Also, you have to make sure that your data is reliable. When you get lazy and you don't review your data labels as you're adding them to your data set, once you get to millions of examples, it can be nearly impossible for you as an individual to clean it, and data set cleaning can get pretty expensive. Now my last tip is to never believe that your model is truly complete. If you're a student submitting a homework assignment, obviously this isn't true, but if you're building algorithms for production, you have to realize that you'll never really have to stop evaluating your models because new people are always going to continue to use it and continue to break it. The world changes, people change, and with that, your data sets must change as well. We're definitely gonna make mistakes, but that doesn't mean we have to stop trying. I'm just gonna leave it there. So yeah, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, definitely give it a like, and if you're not subscribed to my channel, subscribe. See y'all in the next one. Later.